So in that, what, I'm, what I am proposing essentially is to, to really look at the whole of what this community is uh, with, um, with the continuum, with the osmos, who we are and how we can represent the whole in a way that really kind of evens the playing field and gives anyone they would wish an opportunity to really express uh, their voice, their life, their story um, in such a way that it can be communicated and that uh, we can bolster a confidence with each other and kind of stand on each other's experience. And uh, the first thing that I think would be something that might be interesting that I want to propose to everybody is simply uh, a podcast open to anyone, anyone who would like to, uh, again, tell their story through their music. But I think it would be an interesting way to get to know other people in the community who um, might not, you know, might not have the resources to be here today, but very much want to connect uh, with others. And I think it would be a way to really kind of start to get to know just the uh, the culture as a whole that has kind of gathered around this uh, this instrument. Insofar so far as that might occur, I think that there's other, there's many other possibilities that, that could stem out of that as well in just thinking about the community as a resource, thinking about us ourselves as the resource for something greater, something legacy, something more affecting perhaps, you know, to degrees. Um, I'm just throwing it out there, you know, you, you, you might think it's an interesting idea, you might think, well, we've tried that in the past, or maybe you don't see the relevance of it, but I just, I, I remember uh, when I was in high school, uh, a fellow named John posted something to me, which I thought was great. Like, it was an English class or something. And, uh, you know, I, I just, I love literature. And I've always loved literature. I think I, I gave maybe a reasonable answer. John was just like, why, what do you think you were so special? And, you know, it took me a long time to realize that the absolute, answer to that is that we are all special. Each one of us are special. We're all made from the same clay. And again, as a creative encourager, uh, I love to bolster others' confidence and to, and to say, you know, I am interested in your voice. I'm interested in who you are. I'm interested in helping you hear your voice, helping you um, express yourself. And so that's something for me, for my heart, that's, that's, that's a bit more legacy. And what I've discovered with this instrument uh, in different contexts, um, something that I do oftentimes is I'll do workshops where I'll bring these instruments in and I'll let people play these uh, that have never had any exposure. And I've seen, I've seen you do this in some videos with like younger people, children and so forth. And just to see like, again, and we've all had that aha moment when you play these things and you're like, oh my God, this is, this is uh, something that I've never known, something that I've never felt, you know. Uh, but just, again, accessibility. So like in the workshops, what I do is I oftentimes will have these instruments and I will do kind of more of a creative composition with them, you know. Uh, but that's, that's just kind of more of why. Again, I, I can go more into that, but I, don't, I want to kind of stick more to the, the objective, which is really trying to look at the community as a whole um, who we have represented here and just see how we, that we can we can essentially, you know, we can grow the value of these instruments um, Essentially by asking ourselves, you know, like 
what we can add to like kind of the growing culture of the, uh, the continuum, the continuing mini Egan, Egan matrix module and, and hospitals A. Um, and I just think like if we start thinking more like like everyone, everyone who loves these instruments so much and kind of utilizing them as resources, it's not just so much of a burden on like, you know, three, four, however many, like super wonderful, brilliant people that like push these technologies forward, but how we can push it as well and how we can help with that in our own way and be responsible for that, such that this could really truly be like something magnificent, you know, and something that could go on and something that, that is a legacy. And so, um, yeah, so that's what I'm proposing today, is at least to begin with, you know, something that kind of gives us all like, a, like, a, like an even platform whereby we can express ourselves. And I think a podcast is a good way to start that. Um, I think another thing that would be useful is to try to encourage uh, composers within our community to perhaps start to write music for these instruments such that people can look at them and realize them as uh, valid, expressive, interesting, new, but playable instruments. Repertoire, uh, I think, would be important. Uh, perhaps uh, pedagogy, I think, also would be super important. You know, because a lot of times, you know, one struggles, like I, I know I struggle for some time, like just uh, just kind of making it my own. And, and, that, and that's part of, I think, the beauty of it as well. But I think that if we could like codify some things where, you know, um, we had composers who created uh, music for it, um, that that could be another avenue that could bolster the understanding of what the instrument is. And I know that there's people out there that can write, but maybe it's just never been posed like, oh, well, you know, you know, perhaps you'd like to write, you know, a couple of etudes, you know, for the mini, or uh, maybe you could, uh, maybe you're exploring different pitch systems, right, within the Osmos, and uh, just, and then have, you know, maybe have these things perform. But, but I think it's, instead of just thinking of it as like end user and like company, like I think there's a lot of room in here that we can kind of like grow and expand. And so I'm just, just posing that we look at the culture of our own community as sort of like a very feral um, garden that they could be nurtured and just kind of looking at the, the resource possibilities of, of what's already there, you know. Um, when I submitted this proposal, I'll just read, because again, I just want to kind of steer the point. I just said, I found it easy to be a quiet observer. Occasionally, you know, participating in like forum exchanges, meeting new friends and so forth. And, you know, like while I recognize the value of this, I think it's a natural response sometimes to kind of diminish one's own voice and to often compare it oneself to those that inspire us. Again, absolute respect, absolute honor, but I think, you know, again, for my money, like, I think that music is simply your spirit. Like, I, I really think that's kind of all it is. And how, int how interested or willing or able um, you are to communicate that to someone else. Uh, I am not by any means, like, disrespecting or diminishing just the immense talent of, like, you know, just the, uh, you know, those that have memorized, like, repertoire, those, you know, the, uh, the muscle memory. M many years ago, I was a classical guitar player. Uh, I studied and, you know, went down that route. And, and that was important to me at the time, but not so much so as, as the realization of just realizing, hey, music is me. Like, this is just me. And oftentimes when I feel so, like, surely disappointed in myself, it's because I'm not honoring that. It's, it's because I am not being who I am. Not being who I was, you know, uh, meant to be, born to be, you know. And so music is like the highest, uh, best thing. And when I when I hide that, I just I'm just not uh, I'm not the best version of myself. So again, what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to encourage everyone uh, here to maybe kind of like just take a step forward and think, well, you know, what 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 could I really kind of contribute to this community to elevate it, to make it something. Um, you know, even a little bit uh, bigger than, than what it is, you know. And so, um, as I said, uh, I, I just feel like, again, it's great to be inspired by others, but not at the price of uh, kind of curbing your own value, because we all have value. Like, we all have value. And, and that's the answer to the question. It's like, why are you so special? Because we're all special. Because every single one of us are special. 
you know. Um, so essentially, I'm just looking at trying to um, start a dialogue about like creating engaging, approachable ways to kind of reveal this. And again, for me, it kind of makes sense to try to like with with within the culture, as I'd said, you know, develop. Uh, different avenues of these expressions. And I think one thing, again, like, I think we should just, like, we should work on writing music, you know, uh, you know, composers. Um, and essentially just, you know, I'm just, at, at best, I'm simply uh, trying to open a dialogue for us as a way to, uh, to join in a way of creative fellowship and discourse. Um, and I'll go back to the first thing, which is, you know, just very, very simple, but just, I think a podcast is uh, an interesting kind of equal platform uh, to kind of ensure that, you know, you know, somebody that happens to hear this recording, like two or three years from now, is just getting into the whole uh, culture. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah, that would be interesting. I'd like to do that. I'd like to connect. I'd like to reveal my, myself in that way, you know. Um, but just to realize that, again, the, the tenets simply just being that, you know, uh, Music, and again, it's, I, I suppose it's subjective and I wouldn't presume to argue with any by any means, but for me, music is just my spirit, and that's, that's all it is. Uh, and I just, I want to encourage you to, um, to show yours, and I think that in this day and age, uh, music is the best thing that we have going on in terms of being able to like uh, leverage our love and our empathy and just meet in a common place to inspire each other in a way that is just, it's not confrontational and it's just, it's just immediately um, uh, something that, that feeds, that feeds us, feeds us what we need, you know, that nurtures us. So I just want to throw that out there. I, I don't know what, what you think about that, um, but I just, it, it, it's maybe like just a different spin, just a different way of looking at it. But I just feel that like the real resource and the real value is the community. And I feel that, you know, we all have a voice and that should you choose, like, you know, we, we could share that and build on that, you know. Maybe uh, beyond a podcast, you know, uh, we could put together some type of resource um, like a, uh, a magazine, like, a, like maybe an online PDF magazine or something. Uh, interviews, tutorials, uh, it could take a different form. Um, I'm not sure, but I just wanted to throw out some ideas. And I was hoping to maybe get some ideas back and just, just generate a discussion. That's all I really hope to do uh, today. So, you know, that's why I'm here. That's why uh, I, I just, I was taken, taken by Leopold as well, because, you know, he said, you know, you, you should come. It's just, it's beautiful. A lot of really kind people, and that is, 100% what I have experienced with like each one of you. Like I've taken the time to like talk to you and get to know you a little bit and those who I haven't gotten to know yet, like I'd love to talk to you more or, or you know. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's important for me to be here right now. I feel like this is, um, it's, it's what I need to do. So I just wanted to throw that out there and start a discussion. So that's, that's kind of the whole kind of uh, round, round table kind of thing. So I don't know. Does that, re does that message resonate with, with anyone, or do you think that there's, there's possibilities there that we, that we could explore? Or? It's really a wonderful, um, a positive juxtaposition to in the encroachment of artificial intelligence and you know, composing, creating, generating music. And so I just kind of picture myself as a young musician saying, why bother? You know, if it's this good now, how good will it be in five years? But then you look at a community like this and you see you're using technology as an adjunct. And like in my, my situation, I wanted to use it to see how far our pitch perception can go. And so with the new keyboards and with the continuous controller, you start to develop that perception. Where does it lead? Where does this lead for new harmonies and, and the way that consonance and dissonance is defined? But it's like a creative, positive way of using technology instead of kind of the fearful way of, you know, it kind of supplanting everything that we're doing. Mm -hmm. So this is a beautiful community to kind of see all the different angles of engineering and sound design and musicians and all together in this kind of process. 
Spencer Beautiful. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's really um, a creative, kind of unified friendship, I think, to, to many degrees. Um, but I just, I, there's so many, I think there's so many opportunities. And just being here at this, at this con um, reaffirms that. I've never, I've never felt so much that I can walk into a room and like be in my own skin and just be like, you know what, these are my birds of a feather. You know, I understand, you know. And so again, I just, I want to give you anything that I can give you to like, towards that success. You know, I want to encourage you. I want to help you any way I can. So I mean, again, like if, if a podcast is interesting, I would be happy to like help facilitate that or, or at least think about it to, for someone else to step in to maybe do that. Or maybe, maybe it would make sense for like multiple people to like, like obviously people are going to resonate with others conversationally such that, you know, maybe uh, if, if we had a number of people that were like, yeah, you know, I'd like to, I'd like to get involved with that. Just, just see how it grows, you know, because again, I think the, the most important thing is just tell your story. You know, this, our, the music, our music is the story of our lives, you know. So, uh, what are we doing now? Each one has a truck and then there's a podcast company. What we did? Good idea? I think it's a great idea. Mm -hmm. like it's a great idea. Let's, let's, let's give it a year. Next time I can meet you, we all have one track. You don't come to continue that. You're kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> no track, no admission. Take that. I think, Byron, um, what you're saying is it's really important to be reminded about what kind of brought us here in the first place. And there is this, I, I personally find music just this amazing thing that is completely worthless and completely valuable at the same time. Like we could survive without it physically, but spiritually it just, it seems to, to, to have this pull. It's very nebulous, but it's, and it attacks you and it comes around. And it's really what goes in and everybody on all sorts of different levels, um, uh, approaches it and they bring their power and their skills to it and uh, it's a good reminder and this is a, a, an important thing and I think AR's idea of, uh, of basically what he's suggesting is a deadline and deadlines are good because you know we can talk about things and you can sort of put it off and as soon as it goes into the shelf well it falls off the back of the shelf <laughs> so um, it's, a, it's a good idea now what it takes is energy to push you know, so it, it, if Byron, if, you, if this is something that you're really passionate about, this is, would be a useful thing to, I think, to apply to that. But I think, you know, the important thing is we can get tied into, okay, I'm going to get the, the, this new soft synth and I'm going to tie into there and do it to this and I have to uh, get this ready. And But at the end of the day, you should make music. And <coughs> if you don't make music, then you're not really getting to the real point of the whole thing, because then, then you make music and you share it with people, and the people enjoy it, and uh, so if we have a goal of everyone producing a track over a year, that's... I, I think a little bit, but I just want to point out there that that what makes this special is the physical interaction, and in the days now where everything is digital, we've got, we're inundated with YouTube videos, etc. I think it's important that that when you gather physically together, the interaction is always difficult. I mean, a number of us went to Superhoof last last week, and it's it's nothing to do with the gear. The gear is like here in importance. It's the making connections. Um, it's the talking to people, having a coffee, talking about something that's completely unrelated, but somehow that brings it to it. And that's where I think uh, Sally and. Uh, Antonio has done a fantastic job here is bringing like-minded people together to actually share the experiences and uh, together. That I think could be quite difficult with something like a podcast because it's, it's often a one-way discussion. You, you're broadcasting your thoughts. Uh, although I do remember, is it Darren Goss he used to do? Darren, like, yeah. yeah. He yeah. used to do the great interview type. He was podcast. very good. Yeah. Um, and I learned about lots of designers and musicians from his. And it was just a fairly relaxed. That was about as close as I think I've ever heard on podcast to this kind of 
a bit more of a free exchange. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think the ideas of tracks is a, a great idea. Um, it'd be interesting to also have this kind of concept of just hearing people's thoughts. Um, that's, that's what I enjoy from these kind of processes. I would clarify something. Um, again, love, love this idea. Uh, what I was trying to articulate, though, in part, is that I mean, I know that there's probably hundreds of people already in the community that have music, established music. I think of like, uh, I think of Josh. I think he calls himself the uh, the mini man. Uh, there's a wonderful uh, uh, Italian fellow, Car Carlo. Um, can somebody help me with his last name? Um, Serafini. Yes, yes. He uh, creates wonderful wonderful uh, music, but when I was saying podcast, and I don't mean to utilize that as any way to alienate anything like this, that's not what I'm saying by any means, um, so I just want to speak to that. What I'm saying is like more of like a remote thing where like again, you look on the you look on the forum, like the Haken forum, I think there's like a thousand people. You look on the Osmos forum, I think there's another thousand people. I'm saying any one of those people who would like to, to kind of tell their piece, you know, we just do a remote thing, put it together, and that gives you an opportunity to know any of these people, listen to them, and I'm, again, I'm not saying use that uh, as a way to separate us from each other. Again, that's that's not my intention with this at all. My intention is just to to have a resource where, you know, if if Josh or if Sally or if Carlo wanted to like um, do a small program expose about themselves, they could do that. Again, I, I don't want to diminish the album because that's like, I didn't even think of that as very cool. That's his music. Yes. And that's talking. Yes. <laughs> Agreed. Perhaps an approach would be to do the tracks, do the album, do the uh, anthology of music basically, and then uh, have people talk about it on uh, an individual basis, either interviewing them or spontaneously have them contribute. Uh, their thoughts on their music and explaining it and explaining their technique or their thought process or whatever to uh, bring the listeners, us, to, to begin with, closer to the track to understand it better. I see. I see. Yeah, and then that would also, that would also engender, I think, uh, just create a friendship. I think that could, that could spark that. Well, it would also be a series. You know, this this because everybody wouldn't be talking all at once. You know, if you were doing something like a podcast, it would be as many programs as there were uh, pieces that were contributed. <coughs> That's a great idea. I like the idea of having having uh, uh, well, like I could uh, mention a parallel. So, so one way of looking at uh, producing a, a piece of music is that. Uh, on one hand, you could argue that it's universal, universal and, and the music uh, tells the message. But on the other hand, it's always subjective. At least, uh, in my opinion, I found that it's very subjective. You maybe have wanted to express something and then uh, the other person uh, feels something totally different or pays attention to something totally different in your piece. And the, the, the uh, emotional impact might be just as, as high, but it's different from from, for, from one person to the next. And personally, I find that the more I know about the idea behind the piece and how it was created, the more interesting it becomes. And uh, that's why uh, usually in handouts before concerts, uh, occasionally, uh, especially if it's a first performance uh, premiere, uh, then uh, there's also some, some text about the piece. And that suddenly makes it, at least in my uh, personal opinion, much more interesting because you get inside the idea of the piece and you might miss that if you don't have this information. So in that sense, I think it would be very interesting to hear, uh, to have some kind of, of a way of, of a, uh, for people to contribute and at the same time also explain a bit what, what they have thought or their method or their uh, goal or whatever, anything about the piece. Uh, I think that would be interesting as an idea. So part of the album to then give the person an opportunity to express the process and the piece as such. 
right? Is it kind of what you were? You were well, Ben picks music is a good example of that. I've always enjoyed his music when he explains what he's trying to do before we hear it, because he, he always has a uh, a unique uh, creative process. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I mean, some some in some people's opinion, you shouldn't tell too much and let let. Uh, the listener form their subjective uh, opinion, understanding, and, and interpretation, and then you could also argue the other way. So it's it's hard to hard to know. And, and uh, of course, if you provide an explanation, then uh, anybody can decide to either uh, take part in that before they listen, or or uh, avoid doing it and form their own opinion. So it's still open for personal interpretation. I think it's good to keep, to be mindful of kind of an overarching idea of what, what we're really trying to, to say with these instruments. And in my mind, it's, it's, we're trying to take electronic instruments into, deeper into the realm of the level of expression that acoustic instruments have been evolving to for hundreds and thousands of years, and yet electronic instruments have been around for a few decades. So the thing that really drew me to particularly expressive instruments, and ultimately to the continuum and now the osmos, was that idea. Um, so, I, I, and what I'm getting at is why are we doing this? What are, what's the real goal? It's, it's not, we're not really talking about a commercial goal of selling more instruments, although that would be nice, but I think um, it would be good to kind of capture why we get into this stuff. Um, it's, it's different than almost all of the other instruments out there in the in industry. Uh, there certainly are some others that are worthy of being uh, brought into that category, but not a lot. Um, so, as we're talking about what we want to do in terms of the, of the methods and mechanics, I think it's also good to be mindful of why we're doing it. Absolutely. Yeah. We have create, create a philosophy as a whole, perhaps. Yeah, I mean, leading on from that, I mean, I think that music itself has quite a lot of divisions and barriers, you know, I mean, for instance, you know, classical musicians um, often have a blockage with, you know, improvisation, um, you know, technology, yeah, you know, what occurs to me is that these sorts of instruments are bringing classical musicians into, in, into the world. But you know, historically there were barriers, and you know, I don't know how these instruments go down in music concerned to us, you know, the traditional views, for instance. But you know, there's a lot of barriers within music, and you know, contemporary musicians often lose sight of expression. You know, the the you know, musicality and expression, and it's the all sort of it more than ever themselves. So, you know, I think, for me, it's completely new to this area. I mean, these are instruments that bring together people from with different backgrounds and different areas of interest. I mean, we've, we've got people that are basically technologists that have sort of been on the periphery of music, and this has brought them more into the, in, in, into the fold of, you, you know, of music. And, for me, anything that breaks down barriers is, is you know, is just great. And uh... I also think that you know, the, the many of the new technologies we have really are great, but it, it always seems odd that the past is forgotten so quickly. That you know, it wasn't when I was a kid. There was still a piano in my parents' house, and people didn't play well. Maybe for themselves and uh, just the value of that versus listening to Spotify. Uh, they're different things. I mean, on Spotify, you certainly get better artists than yourself or most people. 
on the other hand, there's a real value in, in casual music making. And uh, uh, the skills of playing the, the big buy-in you have, if you play trumpet or if you play flute, you know, it's a lifetime buy-in. And uh, yes, it's sort of nice if you can press a flute button or a trumpet button on, on your sampler and, uh, and get a reasonable rendition thereof. But there's also something lost. And I guess uh, for me, uh, part of it is just, uh, it, it, it seems like uh, you know, the cultural memory is very short. And I think there really is something that was useful to let in. And what was before last week uh, that, that uh, we've lost. And, uh, yeah, so, so for me, I'm not a performer at all, but I, I really, uh, I grew up being forced to practice by my mom, but I, uh, and I never got to be a good musician, but so I, I, I still love it. And it, it's been sad for me to, to, to see all the things that I admittedly was forced to do as a kid uh, just go by the wayside. People don't even know what it is anymore. And I, I think part of the problem is that keyboard, many keyboards are so good and so great at what they do that the world forgets that there's many other things out there too that have just been lost. I am a classical musician and only started doing electronic music 12 years ago. And one of the things that really attracts me to it is that um, since a lot of the instruments are so new, there's not a handed down technique. So if you go by a continuum, you have to figure out how you want to play. So somehow the musicianship and the hands-on experimentation come bound up together and I think that ends up uh, being very helpful in producing your own music because you're not doing things the way somebody told you to do them. You're just doing them the way they sound good to you for what it's worth. You're finding your own way. You find your own way. Do you find that it informs your music and other disciplines to go through that process? Yeah, it's a loosening up. We had a discussion, I uh, don't maybe we already mentioned it, but, but, uh, during lunch with some ceramic players. And uh, it's, I guess there's something you can learn from also. There, there are some techniques that were developed, and some are smoothly following these techniques. Some are doing some additional stuff or experiments or problems, and some are just doing their own stuff without following the technique. But that's still good, I think, if there are some basic techniques that you can teach to people so when they don't know how to do it they have a starting point and from that they either they decide to follow the classical rules either they decide to do their own stuff. It seems odd to do things to the exclusion of everything else. I mean, if somebody wants to do paint by numbers, great. But you know that uh, if there's a more free former then uh, the, you know that's good too. I would mention too, just I was thinking about <clears throat> the podcast and an album and these things, which I think are great ideas. Just kind of recapping on where we were six or seven, eight years ago when we started thinking about we needed to kind of start going down this path, which resulted in ContinueCon and the, the website and the Facebook group and <coughs> all these kinds of things. Um, so, one thing I, I I don't know if we need to ask now, but one thing I'm, I'd be interested in knowing is we've been kind of going along the same format for, for ContinueCon ever since we started it. Um, I'd like to hear your feedback, and it, like I said, it doesn't have to be now, but maybe over the course of this weekend and after you go, just sending us a, a note saying, hey, you know, I went through this and Maybe I'd like to see this next time, or maybe I'd like to see the format change around. And, you know, we did like the intro to the Egan Matrix um, every time or something, you know. And now, so now we've been doing this enough to we're thinking, well, we got a lot of, we got some newcomers, we got old people who've seen it every time. Not everybody wants to see the entire same program every time they come. So it's, I think it's a good time now that we're moving into a period of maybe maturing these events 
to think of what we want out of the, out of the gatherings that we do physically, too. And so I'm, I'm kind of glad that, that we have set aside a little bit of time for people just to talk, because then we can hear ideas. And so we, need hmm? we need a performance <laughs> review. We need a performance review. How are we yeah. doing? Yeah. What, do you, what else do you want? Our three sixes. <laughs> Is there any uh, idea of expanding the studio to a course <laughs> on either Eagle Matrix or Continuum or Cosmos? Because now Atmos sound is taking a leap and you know that iTunes yeah. and I think it may be fascinating. Can you do Atmos uh, uh, surround mm -hmm. that sort of capabilities? Oh. That, that might need a little bit more explanation in terms of the like, object or any mixing. I don't know if everybody understands what that standardization is, perhaps. It is the best. <laughs> well, uh, Atmos is um, the first surround um, format that I actually think has some sort of possibility of becoming established. One of the things is Apple uh, has gotten behind it in terms of their broadcast. But the nice thing about that format. <coughs> is that it can be reduced down to a stereo um, uh, signal that is listenable in your headphones. So in the past, it's always been um, uh, it's always been a problem if you do something in quadraphonic sound or you do something in 5.1 sound or you do something for a theater. Well, where do people, you know, the, the real thing about music is communication and for getting people to hear it. And people listen to it on their, um, you know, just on their iPad or something, or on the bus on their on their earbuds, you know, where does that the energy that you spend in sort of making this sort of surround sort of uh, aspect um, is lost? So um, with Atmos, you do have that reduction capability to go into this this binaural sense and, and to, to listen to it. But this, but I think that ties into what Lippo was talking about earlier in terms of. There just hasn't been a lot of research done. Audio is into the, you know, just really the beginning of what is, could be possible in terms of that immersive uh, environment. So um, uh, it's, it's an interesting thing to always be on the forefront, to think, be thinking about that and bring it, in, it into um, you know, our, our collective consciousness. Um, I, I think for me right now, the most powerful thing is exactly what Mark said, which is just this physical meeting. Yeah. And it's and we we are living in this society of, um, of, of the remoteness being a wonderful thing, you know, but everyone has experienced Zoom calls and everyone knows what Zoom's like and everyone knows the difference between meeting someone in person. Um, it may be, you know, it may be that we can just try to find ways of um, of, uh, every time that we do meet, that we um, make sure that that collective experience is expressed with, with the people that videotape. Um, and my one thought I, I thought within that was when you're talking about doing an album, is that if you do present the album, uh, and, and then, then there, we, we set aside a time where everyone has 10 minutes or five minutes in front of the camera to talk about their piece, like what Benedict was saying. And so that would, that would be presenting the next time that we went around, that would, there would be this collective thing. So well, here we've got 20 people, or 25 people, or whatever, each with their three minute you know, edited down clip of talking about music. And it's all in the same sort of environment. So it sort of sees that collective thing. And what Sally says is absolutely spot on. This is really what brings us together and it's, it's what I've always been concerned about is this expressivity of um, uh, that, that is a powerful thing. And it can be that, you know, it doesn't mean that music that dreams around it can actually be very mechanical and hard and, and very machine-like. But if you bring that human element into it, which is the power of the tools that we have there that can do, then, um, you know, that's a good thing. Yeah, I think the, the notion of doing this together Maybe giving it back to the community, maybe parts of that proceed could go and buy a continuum and give it to a kid and learn that. 
to the next generation. Okay. So it, it has a whole purpose for mm -hmm. doing this whole thing. I think so. We've certainly had have had that philosophy that Hawken Audio is not a rich company at all. But um, whenever um, we've had an opportunity to, sh when someone has shown real musical desire, we try to help them get tools. But um, we, we, we do the best we can for that. that, that I mean, I mean, make us, it's a good notion to keep us planning to do yeah. <laughs> the best to talk. To the to the uh, to that end is what you're describing. That implies kind of a, that there would be uh, a potential monetary element to it. That is that kind yeah, of Yeah, we, we, we do all the pieces and then we give you a cost pitch to the reserving because it could be. A, and I think when it comes like from 20 different people, it's going to have some value. Oh my God, all these guys are So it has a purpose for all the And let this do enhance this whole experience, good experience. Give it a look. Sorry, I'm going down for your what? <laughs> <laughs> this is exactly what my wife says. You need three mics. <laughs> I said, like, parts will proceed what we get from this album could be in buying a continuum for the younger generation to give it to a kid who can learn this about a school since it's not a very uh, cheap instrument. Who would our audience be that were, that were willing they, they, to actually they, buy the album? You know, actually, there are so many people in, intrigued. Did you play the continuum? They came asking me, this is the continuum. They, they spot the sound. Did you mm -hmm. play the continuum on this? Mm -hmm. So there, there is a niche audience for this. So it would be awesome to see all of us play. And we want to create a community. It's going to a elite community that people are going to look forward to this. We should announce this. We should announce or put, put us pressure. You take a photograph and say, we're going to make an album. I also yeah. kind of wonder about the overlap with uh, all the other new 21st century technology that's coming online now and uh, the implications of kind of combining these communities into a larger one. Um, like recently in Toronto, they came out with the Lumitone. And so, you know, how, how does the sound design overlap with what they're creating over there? It's a whole different group of musicians that, that want to fix pitch key instrument. Um, but yet, we're all kind of on the same path of pushing the boundaries and exploring the unknown. Um, and I wonder if it would dovetail just that. I, I think it would. I, I think most people find the microtonal community a bit mysterious, you know, and, and really don't understand, um, really don't understand, and, and, you know, so to actually have that presented, and, you know, so maybe people don't understand exactly what we're doing too. And so, uh, you have a dual responsibility now, Dolores. You're in, you have, you're a, of two spirits, and you, you need to bridge the waters. But see, the beauty of the continuum is that it actually can create any microtone. Mm -hmm. And it's really about our training and perception. And so it's one of those instruments that is equally good in each world. Uh, but right now, it's, it's kind of in its own separate niche. Yeah. Well, on that note, actually, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, we created the Bolly Expression Forum, and that, that was created because uh, it was actually around the times that Eigen Labs were kind of like sticking back, if you say. Um, and when I set it up, I did it because all of the MP controllers, etc., they all had their own forums. Yeah. And I thought that was kind of weird because we're a niche within a niche within a niche. <laughs> and, yet, and yet we didn't all distribute across because you've got an instrument, you've got a continuum, you've got a high and half. And I thought that there's quite an overlap. And it is actually quite interesting. We found that like, actually talking. Awesome. I mean, there's also many people with multiple of these, I will say. But um, I think that's quite an interesting thing to look at it as a broader community in terms of rather a manufacturer specific thing. That's not, <laughs> not trying to poke shopping for this. <laughs>
Um, but yeah, this is interesting with the microtone kind of side of it as well. It's a yes, because with a continuous controller, it really works well in either context. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm really curious with the Osmos to try to explore the possibilities of that and, and working outside of 1210. Yeah. I, I just echo that. That's very, very um, interesting to me as well. Um, I, I've talked to a few people about this, but I just want to throw something specific out because it, it was so valuable to me. Um, I discovered um, a theorist who has passed on about four or five years ago. Uh, his name is Irv Wilson. Uh, if you happen to dig into that name, you'll certainly find uh, just a wealth and a path, and it will generate some ideas that you, you might not have had. Um, and there's a specific application that is quite useful to explore, uh, made by one of his students, Marcus Hobbes, and it's called Will Sign. And it's kind of changed my compositional life uh, in some way. So I just, it's a free tool. You know, you can download it. I think it's for PC and Mac. Uh, kind of a debated thing right now, but it allows you to explore Earth's systems in a way that uh, it's just very natural. Um, if you want to spend the rest of your life understanding the concepts behind it, you know, I plan on doing that for however long that lasts, you know. But uh, the point being, you just, you move values, it's graphical, and you just get a quick emotional um, palette that you can score from, and it's just really extraordinary. So I just was hoping to express that because it's been valuable to me, so it might be valuable to you. Is it cool? Hmm. Well, sorry. about the, the pedagogy, how music is just so conservative that it really hasn't evolved that quickly, our notation systems. And, and I was thinking about with sound, sound design, that, that, those, that would, if you were trying to write out what you were doing, you know, what kind of symbols would you use to indicate to an artist that's this playing a piece five years from now, what, what specific things you were doing? It's like we, we're, we're teasing out this new language that doesn't have any words yet. And um, so it, it's kind of curious to me, like how we start to evolve the pedagogy, especially in this era where you can have notation on a tablet and you can, in, in real time, you can modify it with color or whatever and, and uh, express new elements of the sonic palette. There's a lot to be said for an oral tradition too. And there's, you know, there's immediate sort of one on one and there's, we've had history of, uh, especially with a lot of melismatic music from air music that you were talking about AR at lunch that is not really notated and it's it's just it's almost to the point where it's to to um, to notate it becomes this really problematic thing because it's notation is always going to quantify it in some sort of way and in actual fact the teacher and the student end up having this relationship where it just becomes uh, they they understand it without realizing, you know, and they and then they just absorb it. I I always remember seeing this, these pictures of Steve Reich when he went to uh, Africa to study African drumming, and when he first went there, he was very much a Western approach, and he started to notate these polyrhythms and things, and it's almost like someone. Uh, do you know classical? They took LSD and now it, it starts to drift off. And, you know, so 45 minutes later, it's into this dream world. Of course, I'm compressing his whole months of there, and then he just became this thing that he realized it's it's more about absorption. I, I, the, the, and it, it happens in classical music too. Everyone, the the, the the score that is there is only just like a guideline, really, and, and everyone brings their particular reading to the music that, that's that's current. And that's kind of lost too with what Lippold was talking about, that you know, people don't play music, they don't hear it directly, and music is this recorded thing that's static when it actually should be living and, you know, existing. Well, but hey, you know, so written music, so we, in our time, so we can record music, but a hundred years ago this wasn't possible, yeah. so, so writing music was the only way to uh, to give a composition to someone else, but mm -hmm. uh, today um, 
you can sync something in, in your uh, MP3 recorder and um, you, <coughs> it's reproducible and um, you do not uh, need to reproduce it exactly the same so, so you can give your idea to someone else but you don't need to be able to, to write music so, so I cannot write music and I cannot read music but I can listen to music and I can listen to what someone else uh, plays and I can bring my own ideas uh, into it so um, I, I, I see the, the possibilities so um, um, like Ed said it's um, well it's, it's about the magic of music what would why or like say why, why do we do this so, um, I think this is the <coughs> The interesting part for me, so mm -hmm. trying to understand. So, um, why, why am I doing this? Well, why, what, uh, it, it does something with me, and I, I want to make music, and I want to explore sounds, and I don't understand why. But it's not important it's to understand why. It's just important it's just to do. It. Yeah, <laughs> yeah was, I had to grab a call. What composer were you talking about? Pardon? Steve Wright. Steve Wright. Yeah. There's a long history of trying to notate electronic music. I mean, people have been doing it for decades, uh, and no one has ever been able to read on any kind of standard, so nothing has really caught on. But I think, like, uh, are you familiar with Bang on a Can's realization of Brian Eno's music for airports? They must have come up with some way to notate that to be able to pull it off so perfectly. I mean, the only other option would be all of them memorized every, if, when they came in, and every, every note that they were playing, they must have had a way of notating. Well, they, there's probably, you know, I mean, I, I don't know, I mean, I saw them do it, but they, they probably just used cues for a lot of this stuff, too, you know. Live. Because he just he just recorded it live as he felt yeah, it. But they, you know, I, I'm just thinking they just go, okay, we win. whoever's conducting, it goes, okay, we win. I'm, I'm getting bored, let's bring in the bring in the uh, penguins, you know, just cues. And, you know, <laughs> so a lot of it that is, you know, that like live. Well, that's why it was creative originally, but then for them to reproduce it years later yeah. was the challenge. Without any kind of notation. Or with, I don't know. There's notation like notation. <laughs> There's notation like no <laughs> None that I know. Yeah. It's got to be. So what, are we, so what are we doing? We're talking about it. <laughs> All right. Maybe um, just throwing it out there as well, again, like, you know, you notice there's an equal and growing community um, for the Osmo, so it just might be an interesting, might be an interesting way for users just to uh, become very real and enthusiastic with, with the instrument as well. Uh, Opening that up is a possibility. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if they would. Well, since that's based on uh, traditional playing technique more than most continuous pitch instruments, that might be a, an opening right there to uh, supplement traditional mm. notation. Gateway, the gateway drug. That's right. I, I really <laughs> like the idea of, I mean, it's a bit serendipitous that the Osmos and the Int and that continuum are using the same sound engine and this is the why these communities and, and, and businesses have come together but they're also both very powerful expressive instruments and I I think there's synergy to be gained from continuing that relationship in terms of the gatherings I think it's really I'm really glad that expressive wanted to be a part of this event and wanted to come together with those of us who may or may not be involved with their products because I think that synergy is real and um, I'd love to see that continue. Um, and, you know, one of the thoughts that, that we've bounced around before was like, well, how big does this get? You know, does it, do we start looking at some other things that we feel like scratch the itch on why? Um, or not. 
Well, that was part of the original discussion when we conceived of continued That's right. How many other instruments do we bring in? I don't remember our process for deciding, let's just focus on the continuum. Yeah. Do, you re do you remember how we made that decision? Well, I mean, I got to the continuum through the Eigenmark, for example. Right. Um, you know, there's, and there's a lot, there's, there's, there's the Lynn's I mean, when Roger Lynn has been to continue time, yeah. and some people have, it's funny, because I've had comments where people say, well, what's Roger Lynn doing there? You know, he's a competitor. It's like, no, that's not the problem. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't see it that way. No, he doesn't see it that oh, way. He's, not. I think, like-minded with those of us here. He's and, sure uh, security. And he wants, huh? Is it security was loose that year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, you know, he wants it to succeed, and we want him to succeed. Also, the first year, we had speakers like Tom Ray, who talked about the history of all these kinds of instruments. Yeah. And uh, you know, it fit right in with the format that we were still developing. Yeah. Yeah. And we could evolve the format. So I think as maybe a, a, you know a forum like this could be the, could be something that encourages new developments that, that fit what our passion is in this in this domain. You know, if you see people with ideas or people who want to come out with a new experimentation or a new project and so we're talking about how those of us who are musicians that want to contribute to an album for example want to create our creative energies we should also in turn be looking at ways that we could create uh, innovation on the technical side of things and creating new instruments and, and uh, processes and part of the idea of doing uh, an album would be uh, to find out what kind of collaborations come out of it. Yep. Yeah. Because everyone doesn't have to compose or record on their own. There, you have access to all these other musicians, maybe yeah. people you've just met, Cross maybe point. people whose music is entirely different from your own, and, and the, uh, the synthesis of the two or three people working together might be something nobody ever imagined. Also, I think it's, while it's wonderful if Lippold can sell a ton of continuums, continua, um, I don't think we want to go out there and say that everybody in the world ought to play the continuum because it's the best what? and the only. <laughs> <laughs> of course they do. Heresy. Which is why I think I think the idea of like involving people play other instruments is kind of interesting. People and in fact, why does there even have to be such a boundary between electron, electronic music mm -hmm. and acoustic yeah. music? They can go together. Right. We'll speak about it tomorrow. Yeah. You know, my, my brother is coming with his guitar and we will play with the guitar tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and I agree with, with you with the spin between acoustic and but that's why. Well, we I think that the other tone is a perfect example of that synergy. Less than me. <laughs> <laughs> one, one interesting uh, uh, collaboration example that came to mind also is. Uh, maybe some, some uh, people here are familiar with AEMC. Uh, they used to have a Facebook uh, group, uh, then they moved to another, another platform, so I'm not uh, involved anymore. Uh, I think it was an abbreviation on ambient and experimental music community. And uh, they had these collaboration projects that uh, everybody received a set of sound samples. And then anybody interested in composing something using those sound samples could then contribute and they kept releasing albums every now and then. And uh, you could do anything you, you wanted with those samples, but, and you could choose any subset of them or all of them if you liked. But uh, the idea was that uh, everybody was using the same raw material. And then the interesting part there was to, to, to see how many different things people came up with using that, that limited material. And something uh, similar might be interesting uh, also here, except that, okay, we aren't making music based on, on recorded samples necessarily, but maybe uh, having a restricted set of presets or something like that, and then, or something else which is restricted. And as you know, sometimes <coughs> restricting yourself is the best way to, to be creative. So uh, I started thinking that maybe something like that could also be interesting. To, to agree on something common and then we see what everybody comes up with, with that, within that uh, set of limitations.
that would have everyone speaking the same Tamil vocabulary. For example, or anything else that we agree on that would be similar to the same. And with regard to the, um, the uh, instrumentalists, the acoustic and electronic instrumentalists, um, kind of being on both sides of that as a woodwind player, um, the thing that's really interesting to me is that, I, you know, you try to imagine yourself as a young musician now, and people just don't even realize that these kind of things exist. And when you're uh, that early in your process, you know, maybe it's like, why, why should I learn the trumpet? at this point in time in our history. But then you see that all of these other instruments and how that trumpet can either lead to that through the mastery, the process of practicing, or um, just the inspiration of saying, oh my gosh, uh, they've got so much farther than a synthesizer keyboard, which is kind of the conventional fare that Yamaha and Roland and Korg are offering. And here you have this whole other community with this leading edge technology. But as, as instrumentalists, we can um, start to uh, make other other people aware that this even exists. I want to hear a school orchestra made up of continuities. I'm not sure you do it. Oh, that could be a mess. Yeah. The, the, the violin orchestra I was in, I wouldn't want to hear that either. <laughs> <laughs> About the limitation. We are, I think we are 22 or 23 here. So if uh, everybody have to just select one present, so we have a set of present, 23 present. And it's good to be the other one with 22 present. So is it a single take or I mean is it a single track or multiple multi tracks? Why can't we put a Yeah, everybody's got to play New York, New York on a different sound. <laughs> can I, can I yeah. select the preset? Yeah. Because <laughs> I pick A440 at minus 35. No, 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 no. That one's kind of that's the devil's thing. That's the devil's thing. <laughs> no, in all seriousness, I, I realize there's not enough osmosis among this group here, but uh, if we have, you know, we, you have, uh, uh, for the Osmos, I love to see just because it, it just seems like it, it's so straightforward and, and actually so interesting you know, and so simple uh, is, okay, you, you get to put your hands on whatever keys you want, you can do that, you can do it with one hand and the whole composition has to be in that hand position and you're using the uh, arpeggio. And with whatever preset you want, but one preset, you can custom make it or and uh, I think the world would be amazed at the variety. Unfortunately, I think this isn't, the minority of us have osmosis, but uh, I, I, was quite, my next year. I was quite taken by the uh, performance last <coughs> Sunday, Monday, whatever it was, in, in the cathedral, uh, in the uh, uh, monastery, uh, the castle church. It was great. And it was just simple arpeggiator stuff. Very, very good. Anyway, that, that's a dumb suggestion for the, uh, for the continuum crowd. <coughs> Something I like to <coughs> But that was really about experiencing live music, too. Was and the, the one thing about that space, it had this amazing reverberation that um, uh, it comes back and then comes back in this kind of like muted format that surrounds you. And so arpeggiators that feed on themselves, it's almost like you're being enveloped with this, with this really nice time window that goes in behind it, that's always reminding you, and then the looping and the, yeah, I can see how that, I miss that. But, see how that could be. but it, it, it's amazing like just how much sensitivity of hands, even you know, just a slight finger, and, and a clever arpeggiator, um, that uh, how much difference that makes. To, uh, you know, get 23 osmos up there. <laughs> you know, really quiet, 
each bulb went really quiet with a predetermined set of chord changes with everybody voicing it however they do it and how at whatever speed. We'd probably make a nice carpet, you know, seriously. Absolutely. You know? You know, somebody say, okay, the chord change, okay, we go to whatever it is there. You know? Stay for a while, manipulate, you know, and then, you know, with all these, like I said, we'd make a carpet. If, if it's soft enough, you know, mm -hmm. keep it soft so you can really hear everybody. That would be a good was not able to link. Hmm? The Oswald has able to link? Uh, I don't think so. No? But it does respond to MIDI clock. MIDI clock. Yeah. But one thing that I found when I got into your rack is the beautiful asynchronous syn sequencer play that you can just do all sorts of wonderful stuff with it. That it's really hard to do in a DAW environment. <coughs> but it's just very immediate and um, just all sorts of good things happen. It would be cute if we could just be like all synchronous with the asynchronicity. Seriously, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. nothing really matching up except it all matches up yeah. chord wise, you know. Yeah. It could be lovely, it could be a train wreck. No, it's going to be lovely. <laughs> it's going to be lovely. <laughs> we'll call there will be blood. <laughs> Maybe an idea for next year's uh, continue concert. Suggestions, not as so much a suggestion, but again, just um, I think an affirmation. This is my first continuum, continue con I've been to, first other country I've ever been to. Um, it's, it's just exactly what I needed for my spirit, I mean, exactly. So I'm just so grateful for you all for, for meeting you. And, uh, just the opportunity for friendship. Well, nice, Byron.